Hi everyone, Sam here from RetroTech. Today we're gonna do a quick demonstration on stack effect and show how that has an impact on building performance. So there's three main pressure drivers that can cause air leaks in a building. Uh, one is wind, which is a pretty obvious one. Uh, the second one is the mechanical systems, especially if they have a ventilation system bringing in outside air, pressurizing the building, or exhaust systems that exhaust air out of the building, creating a negative pressure. And the third that a lot of people don't think about is stack effect. And that's how you can have leakage in a building without any wind blowing or any fans running. So how this works is in order for you to have a stack effect occur in a building, you really need to have a significant temperature difference or delta T between inside of the space and outside. And so that's what we've done here today on our simulator. So we are cooling down the space around the simulator with our heat pump. And then we have a space heater inside uh, creating heat to give us about a 15 degree temperature difference. Uh, just enough to create a slight stack effect that we can measure with our DM32 gauge. So on the DM32, we have this green tube hooked up to channel B, which then runs to the bottom of the chamber where it plugs in underneath this door. The blue tube is plugged into channel A, which is reading the stack pressure up at the top of the chamber, where it's plugged in to the very top here at the ceiling. So what we're doing here is simulating a building during the winter or in a colder climate. So as we're heating up that interior air, that more buoyant, warmer air is moving upward, creating a positive pressure that we can see here on channel A, and it's pulling in cooler outdoor air at the bottom, creating that negative pressure that we see on channel B. So we can see here that they're about even. We have about half a Pascal at the top, half a Pascal at the bottom. However, that's not always going to be the case. Measuring the stack effect in real time doesn't just show us how stack effect is affecting that building at that time. It can also help us identify the leakage profile of that building. For example, if I were to create more leakage at the bottom, it'll send all that pressure to the top. Therefore, if I have a higher pressure at the top, that's gonna to tell me that most of my leaks in the building are down in the bottom half of the building. And the same would be reversed. If all my pressure was at the bottom, it's gonna tell me that most of my leaks are at the top. Currently, we have negative 0.5 Pascals at the bottom and 0.4 at the top. But if I create a larger hole by taking this blower door plate off, we can watch channel B reduce and channel A increase, which is sending all of that pressure towards the top, thus indicating that all of our leakage is at the bottom, as we can see here. And if I put that back, that will stabilize uh, back to where it was. And of course, if I do the opposite, if I remove a panel from the top here, and create leakage at the top of the building, it's gonna drive that pressure down to the bottom. So here I'll remove this side panel off the top to add some leakage. And now we can see channel A go to zero and that pressure getting pushed down to the bottom where we're picking up that negative pressure on channel B. So one important thing to consider about measuring stack effect is that it's really just a snapshot in that point in time. If you were to come back and measure that stack effect in a different season, uh, you'll get some different readings because that temperature difference is gonna be different than what you measured the first time. However, if you get that good temperature difference like we have today, it will help you kind of determine where the bulk of those leaks are located. Another thing to consider is buildings are going to have different stack effects to them. Uh, not only is it the temperature difference between inside and outside that drives it, it's also the height of the building. So this term stack effect gets its name from you know, behaving like a chimney or a smokestack. So taller buildings are gonna create a stronger draft from that stack effect. Stack effect will also be different across different buildings because different buildings have different leakage profiles. And that's one way that this works. Uh, being able to measure that stack effect in real time is a pretty cheap and effective way uh, to see where the bulk of those leaks are located, whether it's gonna be at the top half or the bottom half. And then somewhere along halfway up the building, is gonna be what's called the neutral plane. So that's gonna be where nothing is happening. So it's gonna be that dividing line between where that air is getting pulled in and where it's exhausting out the top. 
However, if we were simulating a summer season here, if we were heating up the space around us and then cooling down the inside of the building, that stack effect would be in reverse. So instead of that indoor air escaping out the top, that cooler, denser air would be falling out the bottom and then pulling in outside air from the top. So if you're someone that measures high-rise buildings or taller buildings or even residential buildings, uh, if you have a good enough delta T that day, feel free to add this to your tool bag as it can be handy to see where you want to focus on if you're hunting down leaks in a building. I hope this tip has been helpful. If you have any other questions about air tightness testing or pressures in buildings, feel free to reach out to us at retrotech.com or shoot us an email to sales at retrotech.com. Thanks for watching.